Those are some examples from a very high level of what to look at from technology as a tool in education. But I think if you're really worried about the 75 million children who are not in school, you have to look at a slightly different aspect. You know, it's not the United States that's going to solve that problem, or Portugal, or Western Europe, or Japan that's going to solve that problem. Because those 75 million children are in areas which are economically devastated, typically, maybe war-torn, maybe natural resource problems, or natural disaster problems. And so there's another area of education that gets to be important, and that's the NGOs, organizations like Save the Children, what they do as first responders on the ground to try to get kids back into school when it's in a war-torn environment, a natural disaster ravaged env environment, or just economically very, very poor environment. And NGOs like Save the Children are smart enough also to realize that you have to have a holistic approach to education. You have to have the right platform, the right infrastructure, the right connectivity, the right content, and the right teacher training if you want to bring technology into play. Rather than have me talk about Save the Children, I want to invite two people out. Carolyn Miles, who's the Chief Operating Officer of Save the Children, and Ed Grager Happ, who is the CIO of Save the Children. And if Carolyn and Ed, you can come out and join me. Hi, guys. I see you came equipped with your laptop PCs. Uh, <laughs> did. Intel Ready? inside, I hope, right? <laughs> Carolyn, let's talk to you first. Sure. Chief Operating Officer, Save the Children. You operate in a ton of different countries. You're on the ground, first responder, trying to get kids back in school. I mean, we at Intel share a lot of enthusiasm for what you're doing. Uh, just tell us about some of the projects you have going on. Sure. Well, uh, I think first I wanted to say that I really, um, really think that your message about not only technology but training of teachers is so important. And so that's why this Intel Teach program that Intel is sponsoring is so important because really the teacher is the core. So I want to talk uh, for a minute about what we're doing in Bangladesh. And for those of you that don't know much about Bangladesh, it's an incredibly densely populated country, about 150 million people. Uh, about half the population is illiterate, and a very high percentage of the population is young kids. So education is really key to the development in that country. And you can see it when you visit Bangladesh. You go to a classroom, and first grade, there's 100 kids, and there's a teacher that looks a little harried, but there's 100 kids. They're very excited. Second grade, there's 75 kids. They're still very excited. The teacher's still harried. By the time you get to the fifth grade, there's 20 kids in the classroom and there's probably not one girl. So there is a big issue of keeping kids in school, and not only keeping kids in school, but delivering an education that actually prepares them for the century that they're living in, not the 20th century, which is what a lot of Bangladesh is about. So we're really excited about this new program, which gets these great classmate PCs into schools, and more importantly, works to train teachers. And we're starting off with 10 schools in Bangladesh. We're going to uh, roll this out and eventually be able to reach 300 schools. And it's a great example of, I think, a partnership that's really going to make a difference uh, for these kids. And, and these are the kids that are going to really change the future of, of Bangladesh. Um, the other thing I wanted to touch on is, um, Craig mentioned that there's 75 million kids that forget about quality of education. These are kids that don't have a chance to even go to school. And of that 75 million, 37 million of those kids are in countries where they're either in conflict or war situations. And in November, I was in Sudan, and that's one of the, the, the biggest places where the number of kids that aren't in school is huge. So we're also really excited to be partnering with Intel uh, on our Rewrite the Future program, which truly can rewrite the future for kids in places like Sudan just to be able to get into school. So we're very excited about that and, and very excited about it. Well, Carolyn, we admire what Save the Children does, and we're willing to be fully supportive of working with you in the future. Ed, I, I want to turn to you for a minute. You're the CIO of uh, Save the Children, but you've got another job, nighttime job, day job, I'm not sure. But it's, uh, you're kind of the chairman of NetHope. And NetHope is basically a consortium of, of first responders like 
Save the Children, Concern, a lot of these organizations. You're, you're the common information technology backbone for all these people, right? Exactly, exactly. Yes, Net Hope, we founded NetHope uh, just uh, seven years ago, um, and uh, we have now 25 of the largest international nonprofits, all the CIOs. Uh, we get together and uh, try to solve how do we bring technology out those last 100 kilometers to the most challenged areas in the world in which we work, where even electricity uh, can be a basic uh, challenge. And we partner with technology companies such as, uh, such as Intel to do that. As a matter of fact, our, our uh, chairman, uh, our CEO, rather, of Neto, Bill Brindley, was on stage with you at WCIT in Malaysia, uh, where we were introducing the ruggedized version of the Classmate PC, sort of the second generation Classmate. And um, we then took that uh, initial relationship and a group that Chris Thomas at Intel uh, headed and a group that uh, Jack Levy at NetHope headed got together and said, you know, what are some of the problems that we have to solve uh, at our nonprofit organizations that we may be able to use this ruggedized PC for? And Catholic Relief Services, one of our members, has a program uh, addressing the cassava root disease problem. And cassava root is uh, like the potato, if you will, of most of the developing world. 600 million people depend on it in their food chain. And so we put together a set of applications uh, with some Microsoft software and some uh, Agilic software for e-learning and also for um, uh, Forms Router for gathering basic information. And uh, uh, Intel and the Neto team put this together in uh, less than 60 days and is now being deployed in Kenya. I have here the, uh, the third generation, if you will, of the, uh, of the Intel classmate, a uh, very nice <laughs> tablet PC. Um, and uh, on this, we actually have both a combination of, uh, of e-learning uh, where there's uh, lessons that the field workers can work, working with the farmers in, uh, in Kenya, uh, can go over some of the ways that they can combat cassava disease. It also uh, then has a, um, a little forms router, <laughs> if I'll get it right there. <laughs> And uh, this is used for data collection so that we can track the disease and see how it's spreading um, uh, and being contained within the countries. And that information then feeds back and can adjust the, uh, the e-learning platform as well. And so we can get new information included in the learning and have a nice feedback loop of technology. So we're really proud to be a, a, a part of this effort. We're delighted to be partnering uh, with, with Intel on this. And uh, it's great to see technology having an impact uh, at the front lines in the field. And we're looking forward to taking that to scale. Well, what I like from both your comments is basically it's existing technology, but it's looking at a problem you're trying to solve, holistic approach, right hardware, software, connectivity, and you can get great results out of it. Exactly. Thank you both, and good luck on your continued projects. Thanks. Thank you. Right. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Thanks. Thank you. Thanks.